Welcome to Freedom Forest guys, the three acre edible oasis that we're creating here in the south of England. Where we like to try lots of new things and push the boundaries with what we can grow using permaculture and no dig methods. Absolutely no chemicals, weed killers or synthetic fertilizers, just what nature provides. So I'm making this video from the beautiful shade of our jungle here at Freedom Forest because it is literally just about the only place we can be here today because it is just so hot. And I know that for everybody, the temperatures we're experiencing now, which are in the high 20s to the low 30s, that's not hot for everybody, but here in England, we are just simply not used to this kind of heat. And our lifestyles and our ways and our habits, I don't think are just uh, set up for it. So it's quite a shock to us when we get this kind of weather. And that's really what's instigated me wanting to make this video today, is because I just wanna share some of my thoughts and observations uh, with you guys from my experiences in the garden over this period of heat and drought that we're getting this summer in the UK. And it's actually not just been this summer, we're starting to notice patterns. And I'm sure lots of you who will be watching this video can relate to the fact that when you spend a lot of time outdoors or gardening, you tend to notice um, the environment and the weather patterns a lot more. Uh, it's certainly something since I've been gardening both professionally and as a hobby, I have found I've become a lot more in tune um, pretty much with nature, with what's going on around me. And what myself and Dan have been discussing, it seems, each year for the last three years is how much drier the seasons are getting here and hotter. And definitely the last three years, we have noticed that each winter has been a bit drier. And then each summer we're getting longer, hotter spells of weather with lot, a lot less rain. So these periods of drought like what we're experiencing now. And today it's um, the 13th of August, so nearly the middle of August. And we haven't had any notable amount of rain for the whole of June, the whole of July, and now into August. And as I film this, we have got promise of rain coming, I think, well, initially it was meant to be Sunday, then it's Monday, now it's Tuesday. So I really, really hope that this rain does come. But I have to say, I'm not entirely sure that it will, or if it does, if it will be any amount that's really gonna make a difference to the ground. And so with this, compiling um, dryness that we're noticing year on year. Um, the groundwater levels just aren't replenishing over winter. And so what we've noticed is our beds, our growing areas are getting drier and drier each year. And as a lot of you know here that follow our channel, that follow what we do, we already use no dig. And on top of that here, we, um, mulch most of our beds with quite a deep wood chip layer. And this is the first year that the wood chip and the soil below has completely dried out from the amount that we're able to water, which isn't very much at all in our main growing areas. We do water our polytunnels really regularly, obviously we have to, but because we're off grid here, we're not on any mains water supply. We, um, we are very, we've always been very sparse with our watering of outdoor crops. And every year until now, we've got away with that. But this year, things are really suffering. And we noticed at the very beginning of the season that our beds, our main growing areas where we grow our annual plants mostly, were really, really dry. We just hadn't had the rain over winter 
that allows the wood chip to absorb and hold on to that moisture which then normally gets us through the uh, hotter drier months. So we were, we did have a few concerns about um, how the water levels were going to go and we also notice um, the water levels because there's things like wells on the property and we have a, a small stream that runs through here um, that again at peak summer it nearly always drops right down and dries out but each year we've been noticing that this is getting less and less water in it and now for months I think since the end of May the stream has actually been completely dry and obviously this isn't just having an impact on us here what we grow it's also going to be having an impact on all of the wildlife and all of the nature around us as well and this also includes how we use water on a day-to-day -day basis and the water that's available to us from our suppliers uh, because their aquifers and water storage systems are also not going to be being replenished. So this is generating a lot of things in my mind that we need to think about how we work and how we're set up in the future. And that really leads me on to the main things that I wanted to um, share and discuss really in this video today. So Dan and myself have been discussing already for quite some time that we'd like to have more perennial growing areas, more trees and shrubs, just really um, because we understand the benefit of creating these ecosystems um, and also for ease I guess of gardening as we get older and not just that but in terms of the return that you get for the time that you put in. Now uh, food forests and things like that, forest gardens, I'm not saying they're an easy thing to create and maintain but they are certainly an investment um, and they do take a lot of work to start with but we see them as an investment in our future. And they also create beautiful edible spaces, which is also what we're all about here at Freedom Forest. But whilst I've been working in our main growing areas over the last couple of weeks, it's become more of a realisation that perhaps growing in, growing our annuals in this more traditional sort of way isn't actually going to be the way of future gardening if these weather patterns that we're experiencing now continue which with global warming the way it is I fear is probably going to be the case. So it's really got me thinking about the necessity to do things differently rather than it just being desirable for other beneficial reasons. And a prime example of the kind of things I've been noticing is about two months ago, I had two small pepper tree plants and they were both in exactly the same condition when I planted them out. And we planted these into the food forest, one here in a full sun area and one here in a partial sun area, but gets a fair amount of shade from this big flax here and as you can probably see from these two plants the one that is in the partial shade is looking really dark green and lush and has put on some really good growth but the one that is in the full sun which you would often think is the favorable growing area is looking yellowed and is weaker and it's still okay it's still surviving but it is not a healthy plant and so the only differences here are the amount of full sun that these plants are getting i've been watering them in relatively regularly and they've both been getting approximately the same amount of water and another example of this is with our courgette plants this year the courgettes that we have growing in our main full sun growing area 
are struggling this year and they have been getting some water not as much as I would like to give them they did have a little bit of a hard start with a mole tunneling underneath their rooting zone as well so that wasn't ideal um, but some of the plants have bounced back from that and again are all getting the same sort of treatment but here what I'm noticing is the courgette plants that we've got dotted around in other areas of the land um, particularly like in our three sisters bed here are looking a lot better for getting partial shade and so all of these things have got me thinking about how we garden going forward how we garden for the future and obviously I'm already an advocate of food forests and forest gardens but it's the realization that this is actually what we may need to be doing and by this I mean creating shade for plants here in England in the UK like this kind of thing has been unheard of in the past but just in three years I'm seeing that it feels like this is becoming a necessity so while we do really value and appreciate the benefits of perennial trees and shrubs and plants generally we do still love our annuals and we do still want to be able to grow at least some annuals every year so this has triggered the thought process of how we can maybe be growing them differently and another thing that we've really struggled with this year is salad crops we were actually hoping to grow enough salad crops that perhaps we could start selling some salad bags this year but obviously the weather had other ideas for us with again coupled with the amount we are able to water now obviously this isn't going to affect everybody people that are on mains water would still potentially have been able to follow that through um, but it's made me realize that growing our salad greens particularly and things like chard and spinach and the leafy greens and, and even things like the courgettes and the squash plants they seem to be really responding to growing in partial shade so I'm thinking moving forward that maybe I'm going to start taking a lot of those kind of plants out of our main full sun growing areas and really focus more on underplanting our trees in more partial sun positions with things like our staple leafy greens and interestingly one of our areas which is getting least affected by this hot weather and drought is this jungle area where I'm sitting now as it already has really well established canopy layers but the style of the planting still allows partial sun down to a lot of the main areas in here obviously being that we love our annuals too I'm not talking about getting rid of our full sun growing beds completely because there are some crops that wouldn't be so suited to growing in a food forest or a forest garden type environment so a lot of our, um, our bigger areas of uh, tubers would still need to be grown in their own individual areas things like potatoes as well because obviously the ground disturbance um, for crops like that in a food forest situation would probably be too much so there is obviously always going to be a place for growing beds to a point but yeah I just really wanted to share with you my thoughts and how I'm processing the need to maybe change and adapt our growing styles going forwards to suit the weather conditions that we're now experiencing so I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas on this as well obviously we're talking about lots of other things like you know maximizing our rainwater catchment and being able to hold and store water in various ways so that we do have more um, for the the times of the year when it is really dry but 
obviously everybody's situation is different as well and there can only be so much of that that we can do so it's thinking about other ways that we can maybe generate the cooler climates for the plants the partial shades for the plants and obviously within that that is likely to incorporate even more lush green growth of bigger plants which as i'm sure most of you will know is such a benefit to the planet and to our ecosystem and to our air quality and all of these things so the more we plant particularly perennial plants shrubs and trees is always going to be a long-term benefit to us and to the planet thank you for listening guys and thank you for letting me share my thoughts and processes with you i hope that by doing this it helps to inspire you to perhaps think about different ways that you can garden and grow to help safeguard your crops for the future as well as we seem to be experiencing this climate change more and more and i would love to hear from you in the comments down below about some of the ideas that perhaps you've had to safeguard yourself and your crops and your water supplies and obviously also if you drop us a comment that means that anybody else that sees these videos can read the comments and benefit from your knowledge as well so we always love reading the comments we find them really interesting so thank you if you are one of the people that have left us comments in the past take care of your gardens guys take care of yourselves and be respectful of the water and our planet. We look forward to seeing you here again soon. Peace and plants.